Thank you, brothers and sisters. Um, we want to take the discussion now. Okay, please feel free, open the line, ask your question, make your contribution, express your view. Um, God bless you. Great. So, Brother Sonny. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor, good afternoon and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Pastor, I really want to uh, say a little uh, from um, Matthew 28, uh, the last, uh, uh, I think from the 18th phase, that the Bible talks about just uh, telling the disciples that uh, all power has been given unto him in heaven and in earth. And I want to ask here, uh, in John, in the book of John chapter uh, 1, the Bible also talks about this power, that as many as that believe in him. You give them the power to become the sons of God. I want to ask, uh, is there anything, that is there any connection between us and Jesus Christ? The same power that he has, do we also have the same power that he has since we are the sons of God that we believe in him? So it's just a question and I need some clarification. Because he says all power has been given unto him. And in John, the Bible talks about that. Whoever that believes in him, to them he will give them the power to become the sons of God. So I want to know, if we can also demonstrate the same power as Christ did. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Sonny. So, yes, that is the purpose of my teaching. And that's what my conclusion uh, was and is. We have to know that our source, the overall ultimate source of power is God. God is the ultimate source of power. There is no power anywhere else. That's why when I hear people say the devil has power, I will just look at them and say, what ignorance are we talking about here? So you must remember that God is the source of all power. There is no power anywhere else. It's in God, only God. Now, Jesus, and as we have said here, that's why this is important for you to have this understanding, that power, everything God has given to Jesus Christ. So let's go to Matthew. I, I just want to stay with Matthew. There are, you will see in the other scriptures, I don't want to, jump around. If the entire synoptic gospel, it's consistent. So go with me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11. Let's, let's read from verse 25. So you see what I'm talking about. Are you there? Okay, 25. And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. 27, all things have been delivered to me by my Father. Note that all things have what? Been delivered to me by my Father. God has given him the Son as the Son. Everything, that's the message. All power, authority, dominion in heaven and on earth, God has given to Jesus Christ. And here on earth, Jesus demonstrated it as we've seen and as we saw. Now, Jesus has given us the authority. And I have taught us a bit on authority. I think we'll have another time to do that more. So you have a source and you derive authority from the source. You are not the owner of the source. You must understand this. It is through the authority that we have, Jesus has given to us, just like you read there in that Matthew chapter 28, that we do what Jesus did. And the second part of it is this. Jesus himself is the one doing what he did through us. So if you can understand these two aspects, 
All power, ultimate power, power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Power doesn't belong to the devil. All power is derived from God. And God has given all, everything to his son, Jesus Christ. And we who have come to him have received the authority, the right to exercise power. And Jesus, in turn, says, this right I give to you, I'm the one who backs you up. I'm the one who does that by the power of God, the authority that is given to me. So that's the way to um, understand that. No man. That's why I always challenge those who say uh, they are so heavily anointed. Say, yes, you are heavily anointed. But it's the spirit of God. The spirit of God in you, in me. So we have been given the spirit of God in us. And we operate under the authority. So here Jesus said, everything has been given to me. The Father has given him everything. All things, verse 27, all things have been delivered to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. 28, he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we don't have any other power except in Christ Jesus. That's the bottom line. It is in Christ Jesus, the one whom the Father, the Almighty God, has given all power, everything. The Bible says, without measure. So the same power, the God's power, let me not even get into those um, languages so you're not confused. Everything God has, he has given to the Son, and the Son has given us the authority to manifest that power. That's one. Two, the Son has reconciled us to the Father by the Spirit that has been given to us to have the Spirit of God in us that helps us, that teaches us to manifest God in us. I hope that clarifies the question. Please. Any other question or contribution? Okay, Brassoni, go ahead. Yes, uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Pastor. But I see you have um, one more thing to ask, uh, please. Uh, it's in the that same Matthew uh, 28, during the studies that we went through. I came across the, uh, in, in verse 17 of Matthew 28. Uh, the Bible talks about the fact that, that when Jesus actually appeared to his 11 disciples, the Bible says in verse 17, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. So I want to really know what actually happened to this set of disciples that they live with him, they work with him, they saw all that he did while he was with them, and he even told them that he's going to resurrect. But here the Bible talks about the fact that some of them still went ahead to doubt that he was the one that actually resurrected. So I want to know what would have been the problem if there's anything that I, I, I can be cleared here, please. Thank you. Uh, Brother Sonny, how about you? Don't, don't you doubt him in certain things? So what's, uh, what's, what's the big thing? Are, are, are all of us uh, in our challenges and situations not doubting him at times? Anyway, just to put this uh, in context, remember, that's why I keep emphasizing that when you're studying the synoptic gospel, remember these were Jews. They have not received the Holy Spirit, which you just talked about. That power, that spirit that makes us sons and daughters, that transformation, they haven't received. They were still very much acting and themselves, okay? That's one. Number two, this was new. This was new. Huh? So, even if they started, like you would, when you when we go to Acts, you start seeing, you will see that the apostles grew 
in the knowledge of the word and the ministry as well. So this, this was new. So you look at them and say, what was wrong with them? What was wrong? Nothing was wrong with them. They were Jews. They had their doctrines and traditions and all that. And here they were with Jesus, learning new things. Just like the kind of questions that sometimes we ourselves also ask, right? Because of the level of knowledge that we have. So despite that Jesus has told them, they have their own backgrounds, they have their own baggages. It was only with time. Now, but all these 11 were still there in Acts chapter 2, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And after that, you can see the difference. You can see the transformation. And so that's why the Holy Spirit is the operator of this grace in us. Hallelujah. And we must, by faith, receive the Holy Spirit that God gives us because we ask in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, like we've said before. So, and you can look at many examples. I, I like us to be practical about this. So there was nothing, I mean, Peter denied him, even when he told him you will, because he knew Peter, who he was. But then it was Simon, hello. <laughs> After the spirit came upon him, hallelujah. He stood as Peter, glory be to God. Um, so it is as plain as it is, some doubted. And Thomas didn't hide it. He said it boldly, he said it clearly. He said, unless, so Thomas, Thomas was one of them here. He said it, he said, unless I see with my eyes and put my hand in the mark, I will not believe. And indeed, that's another teaching. So, and Jesus said to him, what did Jesus say to him? Jesus used that to teach them because he knew they are learning. They are learning. He used that to teach them. So that's the important thing. Come to Jesus and be willing to learn. He will teach you. The problem is when people stand and um, become part of the thieves. You remember? The thief is all the others that don't want to believe Jesus. And so they're looking for what to criticize. And those who, have, who say they have come to Jesus, but they are wolves in sheep clothing, still doing their things and not giving themselves to Jesus. And then they want to enjoy the abundant life. It doesn't work that way. You have to be ready to do the will. Just what Jesus said. Go teach the whole world to do all that I have commanded you. That's the key. So I wanted us to come and see, uh, okay, Thomas, because of time, you already know the story. Thomas said, unless, but there is a foundational teaching that Jesus used that to teach them. What did he say? He said, blessed are those who believe even when they have not seen. That's the era we are the era of faith. We are in the dispensation of faith. And that's why I'm so excited. You don't have to see. You have to believe Jesus. You have to believe the word of God. And that's why I always tell people that the spirit of God is not by sensation. Yes, sensation, you will feel it if you have learned to walk with, the, with God, with the spirit of God. But it's not by sensation. It's taking Jesus and his word, by his word, believing God. Hallelujah. God bless you. So human beings have always demonstrated this and are still doing so today. But Jesus isn't using that against us. He's saying, come to me, let me teach you. And that's what we're doing here today. Come and submit that your own head knowledge and take what the word says. Take what Jesus has commanded, not what you think. If you can take what he says, believe it and do it and trust him, you will see the abundant life. Thank you for that question. I hope that clarifies for you. Please, I'd like to have some contributions. So we'll wrap up here. Uh, Pastor Joseph, please, I would like to hear you. <laughs> we have a man of God in the house, heroes. Glory be to God. Sir. Please, 
share with us and bless us. Give us some insight. Thanks for that wonderful, awesome teaching. Thank you, sir. And it actually connects to the uh, scripture in uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse uh, two to four. Yes. We say that grace and peace be multiplied to us in the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and uh, of his son, Jesus Christ. You know, the more we have the understanding of who Christ is, the more it becomes easy for us to tap into, you know, all the uh, advantages and the more uh, of knowing Christ, and the more we are able also to apply such to our lives. For example, in the um, expanding that Christ is the Son of God, and then uh, going from uh, you know one uh, scripture to another to connect all the dots gives us uh, you know the I would say uh, brings us to that stability to understand that yeah Christ is the Son of God he has all the powers available to him you know and um, is in charge he, he rules he has power over death and it brings us to the point of peace and assurance that, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, in, when you're in Christ, uh, you don't have anything to fear. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the power of God is available mm. to anyone who will, uh, you know, dare believe in who Christ is. It gives us an assurance to be able to face our lives day to day mm -hmm. without any, you know, fear that uh, there's any power out there who uh, can overcome us. So it brings us to that uh, uh, understanding. And the fact that uh, he has given us the right, which is uh, the privilege and the authority that he has given us to be able to uh, use his power you know, we can apply his power to every of our day-to-day -day living. Amen. So it's very important, Amen. not just to read, you know, through the word of God, but to have the understanding uh, of uh, what the word is actually saying to us in the gospel. You know, sometimes when we read the gospel, we concentrate on uh, the miracles and everything, not mm -hmm. concentrating on the person mm -hmm. as it's revealed by uh, uh, those gospels. So the mm -hmm. more of the revelation of Christ we have, mm -hmm. the more of his grace that is available to us. Mm -hmm. And then we can live that abundant life, you know, a life, you know, that is fully... Uh, you know, uh, filled with uh, God. And um, also one of the things that is also very important that you said is uh, what has Christ said in his word and doing what Christ has said also gives us access to that abundant life. Amen. So, Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will uh, end here. We want to pray for ourselves that this abundant life will be our portion. We know the keys. There are many other things to look at in the book of Matthew, uh, which we'll still come back to. Now I'm talking about the living, living the life, living the life, one 
that uh, I, I want us to come to is things like uh, forgiveness, things like uh, understanding a prayer, having routine prayer life like Jesus did, just being able to look at Jesus' life and what he says, what he did, what he says. That's the life. And if we do that, we do what he did, and we do what he says we should do, we have this abundant life manifesting in our lives. So we will still try to look at that aspect. So continue, pay attention to, as we study the scriptures, who Jesus says he is, what the people say, uh, what the scripture rather says he is, what he has done and what he says we should do. Those are the things to pay attention to. If we do this, we will enjoy the abundant life. Let, let, let us pray, let, let's pray. Uh, even right here, uh, we had asked earlier when we started that uh, whatever your own challenges are, what you desire, put it before God. We just want to agree again that the Spirit of God will quicken us. The fullness of Christ will manifest in us. Go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself and for your brothers and sisters. Abundant life. Father, we pray, oh God, help us. Let the fullness of Christ, the fullness of Christ manifest in us. Continue to teach us, Lord. Open our eyes of understanding. Give us the spirit grace, Lord, to be able to do your word, to live the life that pleases you. And now, Lord, we join our faith together. I want to pray. And we pray for every one of us here, Lord that this abundant life will manifest in us, that the fullness of Christ will manifest in us. And Lord, I pray for every one of us, whatever challenge, whatever is there in our lives, we pray by the power in the name of Jesus, let the solution be given to us now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The one that is sick be healed in the name of Jesus. The one that is struggling with whatever it might be, the Almighty God give you the power to overcome in the name of Jesus. In every area of your life, in your work and service to God, receive grace, receive strength to prosper. In the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you will keep us by your spirit, keep us in your righteousness. That Lord Jesus, when you come to take your people, we will go and we will be with you forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Bye-bye.